If you haven't done so yet, please pause the video and try to answer this question on your own before listening on. In this question, we have four long straight wires, and we're being asked to calculate the net magnetic field. So it's worth looking at the equation for the magnetic field produced by long straight wires. And so according to that equation, the magnetic field produced by each wire will equal the product of a constant and current divided by 2 pi times a distance. And for that distance, since we're being asked to calculate the net magnetic field at the center, we're going to end up using the distance from each wire to the center of the square. And of course, that distance is a constant for the four wires. Now, since there are four wires, we would have to make four calculations, one for each wire. Now, as noted, the distance from each wire to the center of the square is the same, and then the current in each wire is also the same. It's 20 amps. And since the current and the distance is the same, we really only have to make one preliminary calculation to get the magnetic field produced by each of the four wires. So symbolically, we can set each magnetic field equal to each other, and then set it equal to this expression. Now we can go ahead and plug in the known values. Mu is a constant that is equal to 4 pi times 10 to the minus 7. The current is represented by I and is in the standard unit of amps, so we can just plug in 20. And then we have 2 pi times the distance. Now a distance of 20 centimeters is given to us as the distance for the edge of the square. Now because it's a square, we know that the diagonal, and we can prove this using the Pythagorean theorem, has a length of A radical 2. Now of course we only want half of that distance because the distance from the center of the square to each wire would be half of the length of the diagonal. So that distance marked off by the arrowheads is actually a radical 2 divided by 2. So that's actually the distance that we want to use, and we're going to go ahead and plug it into the formula. Now, of course, the 2 and the 2 will cancel, as will the pi. And then we can go ahead and plug in the value for a. Well, that's given in 20 centimeters. We want to convert that into meters by converting it to 0.2 meters. So we'll plug that in for a. And then we can pick up our calculators and crunch this down. And we can see that each magnetic field has a magnitude of approximately 2.83 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. Tesla being the standard unit of magnetic field. So that's the magnitude of each of these four magnetic fields. It might be tempting to take this number and add it to itself four times, or multiply by four, to get the total magnetic field. But we can't do that because the magnetic fields are vector quantities and they're pointing in different directions. So our next step is to look at the directions of B1, B2, B3, and B4. Now to understand the direction of a magnetic field produced by a long current carrying wire, what we can do is just draw a wire in black here. And then we want to show a current perhaps that's flowing upwards here. And it turns out that as long as there's current present, there's going to be a magnetic field. And the magnetic field takes the shape of a circle. So we could draw a circular magnetic field line that's sort of enveloping the wire in this fashion, and that would be true for any point. So even out here, we would have a very large circular magnetic field line in this fashion here. And if you're wondering why we drew the circle in this direction, in a sort of counterclockwise direction, it's because we're using a so-called right-hand rule. And what you want to try to imagine, and I'll try to draw this, is that we're gripping the wire with our right hand. And so if we gripped the wire with our right hand, our four fingers would look perhaps something like this. My art skills are incredibly lacking, but that should suffice. And then our thumb would be pointing upwards here. Now your thumb will point in the direction of the current, which we can label I. And then your four fingers will be pointing in the direction of the magnetic field. And hopefully you can imagine that these four fingers would be circling around the wire in a counterclockwise fashion. So this is the basis for determining the direction of a magnetic field produced by a current carrying wire. Let's try to apply it over to this situation here. Now, in order to do that, what we have to do is look at the direction of the current within each wire. The question notes that in wires 1 and 4, the current is directed out of the page. Out of the page is usually signified by a dot. So we'll put a dot for the current for both wire 1 and wire 4. For wires 2 and 3, the current is directed into the page, and we use a letter X to represent into the page for wires two and three. So now look at wire two and try to imagine grabbing it with your right hand, but you have to point your thumb into the page because again, the current is into the page. So if you grab the wire with your thumb pointing into the page, your fingers of your right hand should be curling 
in this direction, the four fingers of your right hand. Your thumb would be projecting in that fashion there. Well, hopefully we can see that those fingers are oriented in a clockwise fashion. Keep that idea of clockwise in mind. We'll go to the center of this square. We can draw a circular magnetic field. Again, it's going in a clockwise direction. But the key is at the center of the square, the direction of the magnetic field produced by wire 2 would be tangent to that circular path. So it would be pointing off in this direction. And that turns out to be the direction of the magnetic field that we can call B2. We'll do the right hand rule one more time. Let's do it for wire 3. So again, grab that wire, at least in your imagination, with your right hand, point your thumb into the direction of the screen. So into the screen, your four fingers would once again be curling around in a clockwise fashion. If we drew a circle, we would see that clockwise would be projecting a magnetic field line in this direction here basically pointing at wire 2. This is the magnetic field produced by wire 3. Now a similar line of reasoning will show us that the magnetic field produced by wire 4 is pointing in the same direction as B2 and the magnetic field produced by wire 1 turns out to be pointing in the same direction as B3. So we've come over here on a y and x axis and we've redrawn the magnetic field lines just to get some clarity. Now that we've done that, we can break them into their components. That's what we have to do with all vectors. Now, if we take B2 as an example, we can see that the X component will be pointing this way, and then the Y component points that way. The same thing for B1. For B2 and B4, their X components will be pointing to the left, and their Y components will be pointing up. Hopefully, we can see that the two X components in the leftward direction are going to cancel with the two X components in the rightward direction. So we actually only have to consider the Y components. Now we've drawn those Y components in blue just so they kind of stand out. And we'll notice that the Y component is opposite to this angle that we can mark theta. That's true for this set of Y components and that's true for this set of Y components. Now because it's opposite the angle we can use the sine to determine that Y component. So we know that the Y component of each of the four fields, maybe we can call it BY, is going to equal B times the sine of theta. Now, theta turns out to be 45 degrees, and to see that, what we can do is come back to the square and draw the two diagonals, and then we'll draw another line that kind of cuts through the middle of the square like this. And just for some basic geometry, hopefully we know that this angle up in here would be 45 degrees, and that makes this angle 45 degrees as well. And by the same line of reasoning, this angle will be 45 degrees. So theta is definitely 45. We can go ahead and actually figure out the by component by taking b, which was this value, and then multiplying it by the sine of 45 degrees. And when you work that out, you should get exactly 2 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla for the Y component. Let's not forget there are four Y components. There's the one from each of the four magnetic fields. So to get the overall magnetic field, we're going to take this Y component and multiply it by 4. And of course, when we do that, we get 8 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla. And because it's pointing in the positive y direction, we could write that as 8 times 10 to the minus 5 Tesla j hat. That would be the net magnetic field in unit vector notation. So this is the final answer.